This is uh, Jeremy Ryan, uh, formerly more commonly known as Segway Jeremy Ryan on Facebook. Uh, I'll be the moderator for this evening. Uh, today what we were going to be doing is we're going to be doing a candidate forum. This was put in place so that the people, uh, the citizens in the district would get to know the candidates a little bit better. Um, we will have three parts of this forum. Um, Thank you, Jeremy. I'm going to move the chair back. Um, well, thanks for coming. This seems to be the first full forum with uh, a lot of the candidates who are running, and uh, we really appreciate everyone coming out. I was asked just to talk a little bit about what it's like to be one of the 99 in the assembly, and more importantly, uh, what we do after the election. Um, because, you know, this is going to happen with the July 12th primary and April, I'm sorry, August 9th, is that right? August 9th general election. Uh, but, as you well know, this has been a very interesting session. Uh, now I'm in my seventh term, and I can definitely tell you the last few months are like nothing uh, I have experienced before. Uh, rule of law seems to not matter anymore. Uh, the building's in a complete lockdown, worse than uh, we ever had after 9-11. And uh, the governor has certainly uh, taken a path, unlike any other governor before, Democrat or Republican, in really not listening to the people and uh, kind of more busy listening to the Koch brothers and those who call up and pretend to the Koch brothers. Uh, so it's been a very interesting session, to say the least. But I got to tell you, 80% of what happened the last few months that was good, that really helped us out, was everyone in this room who came on a regular basis to the Capitol. And we had 10,000 people, 20,000 people, 100,000 people showing up. That really was 80% of what got done. Yes, the Senate left, and that helped out buy us some time. Yes, the Assembly fought on the floor, and we had the longest session in state history, uh, 62 hours until they stopped us. But what really mattered every day was when the cameras saw the people. Tens of thousands of people coming because their voices uh, weren't being heard by state government. And uh, I think this is really indicative of why you have such a great slate of candidates. There's definitely a lot of interest in what's happening. And I can tell you, uh, being in one of the 99, I need uh, more good people to help us. Uh, we now are at 39 Democrats in the State Assembly, the exact same place when I started uh, 12 and a half years ago. And while we had a brief two-year period in the majority while I was around, uh, it really wasn't enough. And we need to get that majority back. So I just want to again thank everyone for coming tonight, let you know the work is not done when the election is over. And every single person here who's supporting someone or deciding who to support, we need your help to continue this fight against what Scott Walker is doing. We've got Senate recall elections. We hopefully will have a gubernatorial recall election. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Uh, it's going to be a great night, and thanks so much for being here tonight. I look forward to working with you very soon. Take care. Well, it's clear we have a wonderful group of candidates here. Um, now it's time to move on to the questions. Um, as far as the questions go, this will be done in a format. Each candidate will have a minute to answer each question. If they'd like to pass, uh, they can feel free to do so. Um, just say pass. And uh, we'll move on to the first question. Um, now this is, a, this is a very important question. Uh, one, uh, it's a two-part question. The first part is, as candidates, are you willing to commit to work together? Because obviously only one candidate can win. Are you committed to uh, working together for a common goal of defeating this radical agenda before us? And the second part is, how do you plan to do so? And keep in mind that you are in front of the people that are in your communities that will hold you accountable for what you answer. And I will too. The second part is how. How do you plan to work together? So absolutely, I'm committing to working with my fellow candidates on being united. I mean, this is really a new era of progressive politics in our state, and we saw this at the Capitol. I saw it, and I know a lot of you saw it. United, we are very strong. Divided, um, divided we are weak. We were horrified, but unified. Horrified, but unified. 
We can't be in our silos any longer. It's not about just labor. It's not about just women. It's not about just the environment. It's not about just LGBT issues. All of these issues are interconnected. They're all about an individual's fundamental right to make major decisions about their lives. So we're in an era of unity politics, and that's what we have to be as progressives. Certainly that's what we have to be as candidates, and we have to seize this opportunity. Because if we don't, these precious rights that we all support up here are going to be eliminated. And I think a couple things that we can do is, once this budget comes out, and it's gonna be a devastating budget, particularly for individuals who are underserved, we can get together as as candidates and outline the concerns that we've heard at the doors because we've all been out there in the communities and urge our uh, Democratic and Republican legislators to take another look at this and, and try to help us turn things around. That's one thing we can do. The second thing we can do is make sure people know about this election and get out to vote. And I think we've been doing a pretty good job of that in informing people that this is their opportunity to have their voices heard and we all need to take it. Together. I think that there are some uh, specific skills and abilities that I can bring that can help to strengthen the, uh, the job of the assembly person, uh, if, no matter where uh, we end up. I think that uh, I have an ability to write grant proposals. I brought more than a million dollars into the state. Uh, I have an ability to go out and to talk to people and to be able to de develop things based on what it is that they need. And I think that all together, we, everyone here, is interested in seeing a recall and seeing a repeal of the, of the laws that have been passed or are being passed, a restoration of our rights and to replace some of the programming that is harmful rather than helpful. I think that all together, we hold very much the same ideals. I think I, I'm very committed to working with the other members sitting up here. I've worked with many of them um, over the past several years and will continue to do so. I, I, I truly believe we are all on the same team. We are not running against each other. We are running against the Republicans' radical agenda. And I think what's really important is once we get the majorities back, which is going to take significant work, just like we had last session, a uh, Democratic governor and Democratic majorities, we need to have a solid Democratic agenda. We can't have the Senate leader fighting with the speaker, fighting with the governor. We need to decide what we as Democrats stand for, and we need to move forward together. Well, as part of my job, it's a collaborative process, and I, I see some people in the audience who are uh, acquainted with the legislative process, who in fact are legislative aides like myself, and pulling together a disparate group of people, uh, some in different parties even, and to get together behind a good idea is something I've done before and I can do again, frankly. I, I think that we've got a good chance of getting the Senate back, and that's really one of the bright spots in the future, in the near future. Uh, if not with these recalls, then perhaps in the November elections, because we are close. We only need three seats in the Senate. We need about 20 in the Assembly, so that's going to be a different story for a while. But it seems that the pendulum in politics swings dramatically one way and the other. And I don't think there is anything uh, that is more dramatic than what has happened to this state. And I think people realize it, down to uh, just a man on the street and a woman on the street who, who don't really follow politics. Well, they know something's wrong in Wisconsin, because this isn't the Wisconsin way. This isn't the way we do things. We don't pull surprises on people. I bet you to say that if Scott Walker had mentioned word one about breaking public unions, he wouldn't be the governor today. He pulled a fast one on us. So people are wary. They know what he's done and how it's going to affect their community. 
So one of my favorite outlooks, one of my favorite sayings in life is if we all do a little, together we can all do a lot. And I think no matter the outcome of this race, I'll be the first one to attend a, a unity rally, get together following the primary election. Thank you. Already encouraged by our ability to work together, by the fact that we're all here tonight and we all managed to very um, peacefully um, hand our literature quickly to those few who walked through the door who were not with a campaign. So I'm already encouraged by that, by our ability to do that. Um, of course, I will work um, with whoever wins this race. Um, my activism and community involvement preceded and long predated this election, and it will, of course, continue after this election. I'll give three specific ways that I think I would continue to collaborate with whoever wins this race. One, I would, um, of course, endorse whichever Democrat emerges from this primary and work to get them elected. Two, I would continue to educate the public about the implications of the Republicans' agenda and help um, whoever our representative is continue to engage the public um, in learning what that agenda is and how devastating it will be for our communities. And three, I'll continue to do the work I've done for quite some time of training people on how to be effective advocates and so they can weigh in and use their voices effectively. It goes without saying that we may not have it all together, but together we can have it all. But we can't forget that in these times. We have to figure out how to change and channel the terms of the debate. And we all are activists and want to be activists in powerful and committed ways to make powerful, long-lasting, ongoing change. And one of the key ways to do this, we all know you're here, you live in Madison, most of you, you know that this is one of the most brilliant communities directly above the center of the earth. When I'm in the 48th Assembly District, we're going to tap into that intelligence and we are going to use this seat collectively to push an agenda that brings the change, that is the leading wave of change like Alec tries to do for the right wing in these rubber stamp platforms of attacks on all of us. We're going to come together and we're taking the power back and we will win. This is directed to the campaign. How do we work together during the campaign? Uh, you're looking at a, a number of super competitive people sitting up here, all after the same prize. And uh, my sense of how best to work together is for each of the other candidates to work as hard as they could possibly work on their own behalf. That helps us all. That helps articulate the issues. And uh, I, I see that as, as uh, competing, but I also see it as a very productive means of competition. I hope also that in the course of our discussions and our interactions, both rather formal like this and informal, that uh, we'll have the uh, integrity and the honesty to uh, call attention to uh, an, an opponent's comment or position that uh, we really, uh, one of us really might disagree with and carry the, uh, the discussion on in that way. So uh, that's my sense of working together. Uh, uh, and how does it happen? Uh, because we're all experienced politicians, we know how to make it happen. And the get out the vote part has been mentioned. One of our tasks is to, is to uh, publicize the special election and get as many of our constituents, of potential constituents as possible, to the polls on the 12th. Thanks. All right. Okay, this isn't Joint Finance Committee. Um, we're not holding the applause to try to uh, impede on your uh, constitutional rights, but we will be holding it in the interest of time.